On this edition of EDR Tech, we're going to be discussing the various EDR reports that are generated using the Bosch CDR tool, the GIT Honda and Kia EDR tools, and the Tesla EDR tool. EDR reports from all the EDR tool manufacturers share some similarities, but it has some unique characteristics as well. In this video, we'll go over the style, format, and layout of the various EDR reports. And we'll talk about some of the common types of data that are typically contained in EDR reports. This video is not intended to provide training as to the interpretation or analysis of data contained in EDR reports. Specialized training is recommended to analyze and apply EDR data to a crash investigation or claims evaluation. There are several types of ECUs that can be downloaded using the various EDR retrieval tools. The reports generated from the data contained in the various ECUs differ in format and appearance. Now today we'll be focusing on reports containing translated data retrieved from airbag control modules or ACMs. ACMs are by far the most commonly accessed ECU and in most cases contain the primary crash data. Before we look at EDR reports, it's important to know a little bit about how the EDR tool manufacturers obtain the information to accurately translate the data contained in an EDR into what we ultimately see and use, which is an EDR report. ECUs, including airbag control modules, may contain raw data that was recorded during a crash or similar event, whether it be a deployment event or a non-deployment event. The accurate translation of this raw data can only be facilitated by software that corresponds with the EDR tool you're using. The manufacturers of EDR tools have access to proprietary translations that translate the raw data into a human-readable format. These proprietary translations are provided by the auto manufacturers who are contracted with the specific EDR tool developers. For example, General Motors would supply Bosch with the proprietary translations for the Bosch CDR software to accurately translate the raw data stored in an ECU within a GM vehicle. One thing of note, if you're using an EDR tool, be sure to ask the manufacturer of that tool if they are in contract to receive the translations directly from the auto manufacturer. Currently, the known EDR tools that adhere to this are the Bosch CDR tool, the Hyundai EDR tool, the Kia EDR tool, and the Tesla EDR tool. Jaguar and Land Rover can retrieve EDR data from their vehicles, and in most cases, you'll need to send them the actual ECU. One thing to keep in mind about EDR reports. A report in PDF form is not the actual data as retrieved from an ECU. The EDR tool software programs translate raw data into a readable format, which is the EDR report. A PDF document file is not contained in and or retrieved from an ACM. With the Bosch CDR tool, a raw data file that can be saved with a file extension of .cdrx is generated when performing a download. The raw data is translated into a CDR report whenever it is opened using the Bosch CDR software program. A raw data file is also generated using the Tesla EDR tool. The raw data is translated into a Tesla EDR report every time it is uploaded for translation via Tesla's website. The GIT, Hyundai, and Kia EDR tools, on the other hand, do not generate a raw data file that can be saved. Raw data using the Hyundai and Kia EDR tools is translated by the corresponding software program at the time of download. An EDR report in the form of a secure PDF document must be saved at that time. Let's start by looking at CDR reports generated using the Bosch CDR tool. Now over 50 brands of vehicles across more than 20 auto manufacturers are supported by the Bosch CDR tool with coverage going back to 1994 model years on some vehicles. Therefore there are quite a few variances to the information contained in Bosch CDR reports. Each CDR report is different. That being said, there are typically some similarities to most sections of and to the layout of CDR reports. Every page of a Bosch CDR report contains a header and a footer. The header contains the Bosch logo and the trademark CDR logo. CDR reports cannot be private labeled as they are derived from the Bosch CDR software. The footer contains the entered vehicle identification number, page information, and date and time information of the viewing of a report or when it was saved as a PDF document. Page 1 of a CDR report contains some common sections, starting with the Important Notice section. 
This is basically a reminder to always use the latest version of CDR software when viewing a CDR report from a .cdrx data file. The next section is the CDR file information section. This contains the user entered VIN. The VIN is populated from the VIN entered at the time of download, whether it was manually entered or using the read VIN from vehicle feature. It also contains the case information as entered at the time of download. The file name and date the file was saved is indicated here. The version of CDR software that was used to download the data and the company name the software was licensed to is indicated in this section as well. The version of CDR software and the company name the software was licensed to that generated the report you're looking at is shown here. The EDR device type or type of ECU module the data was retrieved from is indicated here. And lastly, the events recovered are shown here. Now the information and terminology in this particular field varies greatly depending on how the corresponding auto manufacturers classifies types and numbers of events. The next section is the comments section. This can contain comments entered by the user at the time of download. However, information within this section is editable by anyone that opens a .cdrx data file in the Bosch CDR software program. Comments can be added, changed, or removed, and then saved in that particular copy of a .cdrx data file. The comment section is the only section that is editable within a CDR file and ultimately in the corresponding CDR report. The next section is the data limitation section. This section is extremely important and may be up to several pages in length. The information in this section is authored by the auto manufacturers. Data limitations contain important information that is specific to the ECU the data was retrieved from. It contains definitions that may be specific to the reported data, explanations as to other vehicle systems used to produce reported data, information about the number and types of events that the system is capable of recording, and a whole lot more. Also, sign conventions are typically contained in the data limitations section. So what does a reported positive value mean for a particular data element? What does a negative value mean, etc.? Now is probably a good time to mention the glossary located within the CDR software help file. I talk to a lot of CDR users that don't even know it exists. From the software home screen, click on the Help tab. Then click on Bosch CDR Help, and from there, click on Glossary. Terms and definitions are listed alphabetically. If you see a term or an acronym in a CDR report that you have questions about, check the CDR Help File Glossary. Many of the terms and definitions are specific to a particular auto manufacturer and what it means in that manufacturer's corresponding CDR report. It's a great resource. So back to data limitations. In summary, data limitations vary greatly from report to report. The contents and sections are not the same in every report, and the data limitations section of a report only applies to that report. Data limitations are occasionally updated by the auto manufacturers, so it really is important to always use the latest version of CDR software to open a .cdrx file to view a report and always read the data limitations. After the data limitations section, some reports may contain additional information regarding things like diagnostic trouble codes that were present at the time of the download, general system status information, or other varying types of information. Typically, the next section contains the translated specific data that was retrieved corresponding to a recorded event. There may have been more than one event recorded. These sections are labeled differently depending on the auto manufacturer. You may see Record 1, Event 1, Event Record 1. If multiple events were recorded, Record 2, Event 2, etc. Data in this section is often listed as data tables, graphs, or charts. Now there's no set template or standard for how the data is displayed from report to report. Data tables in CDR reports often include things like deployment command information, pre-crash data information, and others. You'll often see graphs, charts, and tables related to things like the recorded delta V of each event, crash pulse information, acceleration data, rollover data, and more. The data sample rate or resolution, as well as the unit of measure, can vary greatly in these sections, so be aware of that. Typically, one of the last sections of a CDR report is the hexadecimal data section. 
In very simple terms, hexadecimal data is a digital code that represents the raw data retrieved from the ACM. The hexadecimal data is the data that is translated using the proprietary translations provided by the auto manufacturers. Now let's take a brief look at the Hyundai and Kia EDR reports generated using the GIT Hyundai and Kia EDR retrieval tools. Hyundai and Kia EDR reports are a little more consistent in their format and layout since the software programs are essentially only dealing with one parent company auto manufacturer. The first page contains vehicle and case information. The next section is the data limitations section. This section contains basically the same information contained in the data limitations of a Bosch CDR report that we already discussed. System information, sign conventions, data sources, data definitions, etc. Next, you'll see data tables, graphs, and charts related to the various captured data elements for each event that was recorded. Again, these can include things such as pre-crash data, deployment command data, Delta V and crash pulse information, roll angle data, and more. Hyundai and Kia EDR reports also typically contain hexadecimal data, which they label as raw data. Tesla EDR reports are very similar in layout to the others. They start with file and case information, followed by a data limitation section. Now in my opinion, Tesla did a really good job with their data limitation section. Definitions to each data element contained in the report are well organized and written in reasonably understandable terms, which makes reading the rest of the report quite a bit easier. Next is the data record for each recorded event. Like other EDR reports, the amount and types of data varies by the ECU system installed in the vehicle. You'll typically see general system information, deployment information, pre-crash data, and graphs, charts, and tables related to delta V, acceleration, roll angles, etc. And like the others, hexadecimal data is also included as one of the last sections of a Tesla EDR report. And that's it for this edition of EDR Tech. Again, specialized training is recommended to analyze and apply EDR data to a crash investigation or claims evaluation. We put a link to a list of recognized EDR tool training organizations that provide training on analyzing EDR reports in the description section below. Contact them directly for their course offerings. Now if there's a topic you'd like to see covered on a future edition of EDR Tech, please let us know. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified when next month's edition has been posted. And as always, if you have any questions about any of the EDR retrieval tools, Bosch, Hyundai, Kia, or Tesla, just give us a call or go to crashdatagroup.com.